Hey friend, I'm Michael McCurry, and you are listening to the Bible Tract Echoes radio broadcast. Today, I come to you from the Bible Tracks Incorporated building. I'm excited to be able to say that because I'm in the brand new Bible Tracks Incorporated building, and specifically, I'm upstairs in what we're calling the Founders Room. That's where I'm speaking to you from right now. We've had so many servants of God, men and women that have devoted their lives to deceiving disseminating the gospel, stay in this room. And we've tried to tastefully appoint this room with a very nice bed and a desk area and an area for them to relax with their own ensuite restroom and all of these different types of things specifically so that when we have men and women of God in our area, that are looking for a place that they need to stay a night or two or three, we're able to provide that in the same vein, in the same way that Dr. Paul Levine, our founder, a la the name Founders Room, was so nicely taken care of for the 60 years of evangelism that God allowed him to serve before he passed away in 1996. We are, and we try to be, very big on legacy here at Bible Tracks Incorporated, and that's why it is our our privilege to call this the Paul Levine Memorial Room or the short name, the Founders Room. And that's where I'm speaking to you from right now. I'd invite you, if you are able, to come be with us on Saturday, October 1st from 1 to 5 p.m. Central Time right here in Odell, Illinois. If you'd like to come to our grand opening, we'd love to see you there. You can email me for more information or to RSVP at Grand opening at BibleTracksInc.org. All one word, that's the email address, Grand opening at BibleTracksInc.org. In just a moment, we are going to dive into our Bibles. We're in the book of Genesis this week. We began with this thought, God wants to use you. And we talked yesterday about the fact that God wants to use you despite what you would perceive as your disabilities. We'll come back to that in just a moment. Before we do, let me tell you about a gospel tract. Did you know that God wants to use you to pass out gospel tracts? He wants to use you to tell people the lost about the free gift of salvation? I believe he does because he tells us in Mark chapter 16 verse 15 that we, you included, should go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Well, gospel tracts are a great way to do that. The one I'm holding in my hand right now is called A Good Soldier But Lost. A Good Soldier But Lost. And it begins with the story of a man from the Bible named Captain Cornelius. It says this, Captain Cornelius served in the Roman army. He was, Acts 10, 2 says, a devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God all the way. Think about this. Being a good person, a good soldier even, will that get you to heaven? Well, unfortunately, the Bible tells us no. Actually, it's not so unfortunately because the Bible tells us no, being good won't get you to heaven, but... There is a way to heaven, and this gospel tract right here can tell you all about it. You can get it just like all of our gospel tracts for free at BibleTractsInc.org. I'd love to invite you to go to our website, BibleTractsInc.org today. If you've never visited our website, we encourage you to do so. It's amazing. About 50% of all of our orders come from brand new customers. I wouldn't say even customers isn't the right word. We like to use the word partners. I mean, what do you call someone that orders something that normally is free? Well, not necessarily a customer because a customer normally buys things, don't they? Might, might need to look up the precise definition, but so many of our partners also see the need and understand that even though we provide gospel tracts like these ones for free by the millions every year, that these little pieces of paper still cost money. 
of course, they cost a lot of money when you're putting them out by the millions. And so many of our partners see the need and invest in our ministry for eternal rewards, eternal benefit. Now, this is not a health, wealth, and prosperity plea by any stretch of the imagination. But I will say this. If the Lord does lead you to partner with our ministry in a financial way, we would greatly appreciate it. And the cause of Christ, I truly believe, would be furthered. You can do that by going to our website and just tapping the Donate tab. And of course, if the Lord led you, a specific prayer of mine is I'm praying, I won't give you the number right now, but I'm praying for a certain number of monthly givers to see the need. Not just someone that will come and give one time, though we greatly appreciate that, but I'm praying for a certain number of people that will say, you know what, I'd like to give once a month. And maybe that number is $5, maybe it's 25, maybe it's 50. I very rarely mentioned finances or the need for funds on this Bible Tract Echoes radio broadcast, but I felt led to today. And if the Lord is leading you in that way, we would love to partner with you in that way. Bible Tracts Inc. Dot org. That's BibleTractsInc.org. Also on our website, you can find more information about our grand opening on Saturday, October 1st from 1 to 5 p.m. Central Time. It's in just a few short weeks. We'd love to see you there. Now, grab your Bibles. Turn to the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter number... Let's see, we'll go to chapter 18 save ourselves just a little bit of time. We began yesterday with reading about how Abraham laughed at God. That's a dangerous place to be in, isn't it? God's no comedian, but Abraham laughed at him because God made him a promise that seemed too good to be true, too far-fetched, too far outside the imagination of what could be humanly possible. And yes, what God told Abraham wasn't humanly possible, but thankfully, God can do the impossible. I'm thinking of that good old song. We'll, we'll save that for another time. Genesis chapter 18. Let's look here. Verse number 9. God is talking to Abraham. And they said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Abraham said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. Now keep in mind here that Abraham is 100 years old and Sarah is 90 years old. In our day, it's uh, very rare for women to have children past even the time of life of being 40 years old, 45 years old. That, that's a little bit of a medical marvel these days. And Sarah is double that age. She's 90 years old. And God says, you're going to have a son. Well, continue on. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age. I just gave you their ages. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of woman, women, meaning that by human standards, she should not have been able to have children. Verse 12, therefore Sarah laughed within herself saying, after I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being old also? And the Lord said unto Abraham, wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Surely I of a surety bear a child. Shall, shall I of a surety bear a child which am old? And then get this. Good verse. Chapter 14. Is anything too hard for the Lord? I think again of that song. Is anything too hard for God? Friend, there's nothing too hard for God. And despite as we began with yesterday, despite your disability, God can use you. Now, it may be and likely will be in a different way than Abraham and Sarah were used. But can I say, regardless of all that, God does want to use you. I'm reminded of the story of, I believe it was D.L. Moody. Of course, he pastored and preached in the Chicagoland area many years ago. And it was shortly after the Chicago fire that the church, the church there that he pastored, burnt physically to the ground. 
thankfully, uh, many of his church members were safe, and there were not, there's not much loss of life among his church members. But regardless, they needed to rebuild the building. And so the leadership of the church, the trustees, deacons, what have you, they impressed upon Mr. Moody. He said, take, use this opportunity to take a sabbatical. We'll rebuild it. We'll rebuild the church. You come back, get refreshed. I'm sure this is a very stressful time for you, Mr. Moody. You, why don't you go overseas, go over to England, and why don't you uh, just spend some time of rest there? And so he did. But you know how news travels, and D.L. Moody was a popular figure, a famous figure. And so he descended down the gangplank from that ship that he had been on for a few days, traveling across England. And there met him, a pastor and some deacons from a church there in England. And they impressed upon him. They had heard that he was coming. And even though he just wanted to relax, they asked him, would you mind preaching for us? Now realize Mr. Moody just wanted to relax. He wanted to hear some good preaching. He was not there to preach, but finally he succumbed and said, yes, I will preach for you. Even though I don't really want to, I will do so. And the Saturday, the Sunday came and he preached Sunday morning and it was one of the most dead services Mr. Moody had ever had the displeasure of preaching. It was absolutely atrocious. It was like talking to bumps on a log. About four or five hundred people there, but it seemed like the Spirit of God was nowhere near that place. He wasn't within miles of that church, and he was disheartened, Mr. Moody was. He was determined, I'm not preaching again tonight, and so he tried to slip out the side door, but they caught him before he could get away and said, Mr. Moody, please, please preach for us tonight. Uh, You obliged, you obligated yourself, you said you'd preach all day this Sunday, would you please preach for us? And he said, I really don't want to. But since you've asked me, and you've been so kind to me, I yes, I will. And so that evening came, and he preached. And the Spirit of God blew in in an incredible way, in a way that Mr. Moody had very rarely seen. People sitting on the edges of their pews, hanging on every word. And when he came to the close of the service, he asked the question, God forbid something were to happen to you. Do you know for sure where you'd go? Would you slip off into eternity, into eternal damnation? Would you go to hell? He gave an invitation and said, if you would like to accept Christ as your Savior, would you please raise your hand? Hundreds of people raised their hands, indicating, yes, they wanted to accept Christ. He said, again, he thought they misunderstood the question. He said, if you'd like to accept Christ as your Savior, then raise your hand. He he restated the plan of salvation, and the same number of people, if not more, raised their hand. He said, if you'd like to accept Christ, stand up. And those people, hundreds, stood. He thought he was going crazy. Is this the same church I preached to this morning? It was the same church, many of the same people. And at the conclusion of that service, dozens and hundreds of those people met him in a counseling room and accepted Christ as their Savior. And he was wondering, what caused this radical change? Well, at risk of leaving you on the edge of your seat, and to quote another famous radio host, I will have to leave you with this portion of the story, because the rest of the story will have have to be saved for tomorrow. I'm going to ask you to join me right here on the Bible Tract Echoes radio broadcast to find out what changed from Sunday morning to Sunday night. You're listening to the Bible Tract Echoes radio broadcast. My prayer is you have a great day for His glory. Join us for the rest of that story tomorrow. <laughs>